We all take photos in. We all take photos in our daily lives, whether it's with a phone or a professional camera. But how do these machines actually work? How do they capture the images we see? Let's explore and understand this together. Today, I'm going to explain how photography truly works. And this video isn't just for professional cameras. It applies to your phone camera as well. Because whether you're using a 50,000 Turkish Lira camera or your smartphone, the logic behind taking a good photo is always the same. And today, we're going to break down that logic. Brian Peterson's famous book, Understanding Digital Photography, builds photography on three core principles, light, exposure, composition. In this video, we'll look at all three in a way that's both theoretical and practical, simple, clear, and easy to apply. What is exposure? Brian Peterson summarizes photography with one simple sentence. Photography is the control of light. Exposure is made of three parts, aperture, shutter speed, ISO. On phone cameras, most of these settings are controlled automatically. But that doesn't mean understanding them is useless. In fact, once you understand the logic, you can use your phone's full potential and take much better photos. Aperture, the amount of light entering through the lens. On phones, aperture is usually fixed, like f 1.8 or f 1.6. The smaller the aperture number, the more the background becomes blurry. The larger it is, the deeper the focus. Shutter speed, how long the curtain stays open. Phones use software stabilization to control this. If you're photographing something moving, you need a fast shutter speed. ISO, the sensor's sensitivity to light. The higher it is, the more noise or grain you get. That's why phones rely heavily on software correction in low light situations. Together, these three elements determine the brightness and clarity of your photo. How does light affect phone cameras? According to Peterson, in photography, light is everything. Since phone cameras have small sensors, light becomes even more important. Smaller sensor equals less light captured. Less light equals higher ISO equals more noise. This is why phone cameras look amazing in good light, but struggle and rely on software in poor lighting. Peterson says, you cannot understand photography without understanding light. Even on a phone, if you control the light properly, you'll see a dramatic improvement in quality. Practical examples. Changing the direction of light. Clearer faces. Side light. More dramatic details. Backlight. Perfect silhouettes. Soft light. Best for portraits. Putting the exposure triangle into practice. After explaining the exposure triangle, Peterson adds, Exposure is a creative decision. Even though aperture is fixed on phones, shutter speed is controlled by software. ISO is automatically adjusted. HDR stabilizes the image. Despite the automation, creative control is still yours. Practical tips. Keep your phone steady when shooting moving objects. Stay close to a light source at night. Stay still so HDR can activate properly. In dark environments, use your screen's light to brighten the subject. The Golden Rules of Composition One of the topics Peterson explains best is composition. No matter how good your camera is, if your composition is bad, your photo will still look bad. 1. Rule of Thirds Turn on the grid on your phone and place the subject on the intersections. It naturally draws the viewer's eye into the photo. 2. Leading lines. Roads. Rails. Walls. The eye follows the direction of these lines. This is especially powerful with ultra-wide lenses. 3. Negative space. 
Peterson says, Sometimes emptiness says more than fullness. That's why minimal photos taken with phones look so good. 4. Layering. Foreground, midground, background. Since phone sensors keep everything sharp, you can use this advantage to create depth, color, contrast, and the best times to shoot. Peterson pays a lot of attention to color. According to him, early morning, soft, pastel tones. Noon, harsh light, high contrast. Sunset, the golden hour, best light. Blue hour, perfect for city photos. Because phone cameras process colors with software, you get richer tones at golden hour. Cleaner noise control during blue hour. To increase contrast, let the sunlight hit from the side. Use shadows for drama. Avoid blowing out the background highlights. Lens usage, adapted for phone cameras. If we translate Peterson's DSLR lens concepts to phone lenses. Ultra-wide lens, large spaces. Architecture, dramatic perspectives. Disadvantage, distortion. Main wide lens, best for everyday shooting. Natural perspective, telephoto lens, portraits, close-up details, background compression. Always prefer optical zoom over digital zoom. Brian Peterson's Practical Exercises, phone version. One of the most important parts of the book is the exercises. Here are the adapted versions for phone users. Photograph the same object from six different angles. Spend a day capturing only shadows. Choose one color, like blue, and photograph only that. Get close to the ground and shoot upward. Capture the same scene in the morning, noon, and evening. Even just one week of these exercises will significantly improve your photography. Conclusion Brian Peterson teaches us one simple truth. Photos are taken not with cameras, but with your eyes and with light. No matter what phone you use, if you can control light, understand composition, and grasp the basics of exposure, you can take professional quality photos. If you enjoy technical practical content like this, don't forget to like the video and subscribe for the next episodes.